Hi everybody, today we look how to install this plugin and use it as a reference. You go to the Epic Launcher, you select Lyra, you yeah, select a directory. The engine currently is 5.2 and then we just say create. That might take a while, it's 20, 25 gigabyte altogether. Faster the second time when it comes from the local cache and has not changed. But yeah, let's speed it up a bit. But as I said, that can take a couple of minutes. So, okay, then we have the directory, you enter it. And here we have the Unreal project. You right click, use options, can select here the engine version, should be the latest one, and can generate the Visual Studio project files. So we leave it here at 5.2 and we create the Visual Studio files. That's a prerequisite to actually be able to compile Lyra, Lyra and run Lyra and compile our plugins, most importantly. So it should open here. Be sure that you either um, debug it in an editor mode, develop or debug game editor. Then you go to create, that's Germany in my case, and say clean project. And that should take a couple of seconds and should tell you, yeah, I cleaned everything and deleted the old things. And now we can go to create and create new. That might take some while, so a couple of minutes maybe, I speed it up here a bit, but that will make sure that you have a cleanly compiled Lyra that is ready to go. And at this point, we are able to try it out, still without our plugin currently, but just an empty Lyra that has a debugger running in the background and can be played like a standalone version. It might compile the shaders here, depending a bit what you did, and that can take a a while, half an hour or something. Um, other than that, you should see here the standard layer screen and can select whatever project you want to do. Okay, let's close that again. And now let's think about getting the plugin. You go to the game folder, to plugins, to game features, you open it and you see here are the Lyra plugins. Then you use any git. I use Tortoise and say clone and clone the directory I put here under the tutorial, that's the Bastian plugin. And after a while, it should say, okay, close. It's about one gigabyte. And here we see the plugin. Now we have to tell Lyra to actually recognize it and include it in the compiling. So let's close Visual Studio at this point. Yeah, closing. And again, right click and recreate the files. That's something you do from time to time if Lyra uh, kind of gets a hiccup. So just recompile it from there and then it should work. Let's have a look if the plugin is actually there. So we open it, go into plugins, game features, and yeah, Bastian plugin seems to be here. And here, that would be also the case where you see your own plugin and then you can leave that as a reference. We do the same here. We clean the project, we recreate it and wait a moment and then we start it. Our expectation would be that we not only have the pure Lyra, but also the Bastian plugin um, being able to be run. Okay, kind of looks the same, but we have new plugins available. So let's manage them and go to game features. And here, yeah, it's recognized and you see it here and can start working on it. So that was the left side here from the infographic to get the code, we have done that. Next thing in game settings. Default map, yeah, that's a bit cosmetic, but if you want to start with that default map from the plugin, you go to maps and modes and you look here for the demo map and same here again. Oh, if you get an error, you say no cancel. That is because certain things are not set already, but that's something we will do later. So we again here demo map and then we can make sure that we actually start with that map or with your plugin map. More important are actually the plugins that I use that is, for example, the 3D text that is very, very nice that needs to be there. Then we have the HTTP blueprint, something I started using that might be an interesting one for calling APIs. Then we have the blueprint stats. If you want to have some statistics or measurements out of your blueprints. So that is something. Then the targeting system, it's a gameplay ability based targeting. That's quite interesting. We will continue with that. Python foundations, that is uh, interesting if you want to um, automate your, your editor a bit. Um, post search is done from the animations. And I think that's it, and we have to restart. 
So with these plugins now active, we do a bit more cosmetics. One thing is that I like to do is actually going to the editor preferences, saying open here. And then the asset editor open location, for me, it's always main window. Otherwise it's clustered with windows that I don't find. I uh, just have one screen. In project settings, again, a bit cosmetic, that's the loading screen. So if you look for that, then Lyra actually has a loading screen that you could set to your plugin, or in my case, the Bastian plugin. So again, cosmetic. Then the very important one, um, the asset references policy. So game asset references policy. And here the default project content rule can reference these domains. And here you have to add the Bastian plugin and maybe your plugin if the main Lyra project should be able to reference that. And I do that, for example, with the animation blueprints that we set a bit later. So that is something we need. And then net mode should always be client. So always target a client server architecture, even if you build a standalone project. Otherwise, it's absolutely a mess to change that later. So let's do that from the beginning and only. The gameplay text, that was, that was something we had to do, but now I solved it finally. So gameplay text, if you look at it, project settings, then you should, should see all the gameplay text here. For example, the weapon text that is from the Bastion plugin. Yeah, all there, it's fine. That is, uh, that is uh, an, an external ini file that sits in plugins, game features, then Bastion plugin, config, tags, and here you have something that needs to be called exactly the same as your directory of the plugin itself. So Bastion plugin, and then tags, and then ini. Otherwise, it will not be found by Lyra. That took me a while. Now we have to change a a tiny bit on the original Lyra, Lyra content, unfortunately, because that is something that is not so easy um, to copy into a plugin. The animation blueprint mannequin base is something we have to open. And here we have to link the animation blueprints that comes with each weapon. So each weapon has a kind of different animation blueprint. And that is something we want to link into here, the main one, because they need a couple of parameters that are only available here. One thing is we have two weapons. One is the Agonian Mace. The other thing is the Long Sword. Same thing, we right click, we search for the name and we see here the animation blueprint BA for Long Sword and Agonian Mace. So we just link it in here and now we are sure it's wrong. The parameters, one of them crouching is already there because it's one of the standard parameters that Lyra also uh, compiles. But now we need a couple of other ones. That is really something where we have to first create a couple of variables for to feed them to. So we need two transforms. That is the left hand and the right hand socket. Actually, only the right hand socket, uh, the left hand socket is, is, is used here in the project, but we track both. So we need transform left hand socket and transform right hand socket. The naming itself actually doesn't play a big role. We have to recreate these variables anyway. Just make sure it's left and right hand. So now we need a couple of booleans. So true false variables that are fed um, different other parameters of the weapons. For example, which weapon is active? Is it a one-hander or a two-hand weapon? So let's select Boolean here. And now we need to have an indicator if it's a two-hander or single-hander weapon. So is two-hand weapon is my one parameter. And then we add one parameter per weapon that is available in game and where the animation blueprint is linked into it, because that's the indicator if that, that animation blueprint will actually be ignored or processed. So it's long sword, and then same thing with a Argonian Mace. Weapon is Argonian Mace in my case here. And now we have these three Boolean and two transforms that can be fed to the animation blueprints from this main animation base. So putting control and mouse shifting it, dragging it will give you the setter. Let's do it for two hand. Alt dropping actually give you the getter. We don't need that one. So we have the getter for the left hand. We need it for the right hand. We already have it for the indicator if it's two hand. The long sword is, the Argonian mace is not. So let's copy here, make it easier, left and right hand socket. 
and last thing is actually the weapon itself so the longsword is longsword and the agonian mace is agonian mace now we have all the indicators set um, that are needed now let's do a bit cleanup and now the big question is how to fill them actually with values the filling happens mostly the logic for it in the plugin via gameplay tags and via direct sets of these variables now we have to make sure let's start with the gameplay tags to map the gameplay tags to these booleans you filter the class defaults for property and you see a lot of gameplay tags that are already added and we add three more one of them is longsword for example that is the gameplay tag and it should be mapped obviously to our new boolean that we just created uh, where is it uh, down there weapon is longsword same thing goes for the maze so that's a very easy way to map whatever boolean you have to gameplay tags but it can only done here in this animation main animation blueprint not in your plugin directly and last thing is two-handed so that doesn't run the game thread so it's very performant and very a very nice way actually to use gameplay tags within your logic okay that is that good cosmetic commenting that is our weapons animation blueprints oops so okay <laughs> Let's compile it. yeah that works and now we actually have to set these variables and we already get an error because we recreated that variables that are set in a different blueprint so let's go to animation blueprint ba base and here we have references to the main animation blueprint this is a child class from it so it sees the variables from the other one that we just recreated and naturally as we recreated them they are changing here so these variables do not exist anymore but the new ones do so we just look for left and right hand and set them instead of the old one that we can delete. So just a second transform, next one, then we update here the transform. This above is just the debug information that you actually can get rid of the moment you are satisfied because it will um, write out the transforms for each frame into the log. And that's quite resource intensive. And again, here, setting it up for debugging. And then going down again. And here, we need to transform. Okay. So, without debugging, you just go to the parent blueprint update animation. Yeah, looks much better. Now we generate the transforms in each frame. We push them to the new variables. These variables can be used for our weapon animation blueprints and then that should be fine. Uh, still one error. Ah, yeah. The property mapping for whatever strange reason in the child class will be lost always first time. So meaning we have to redo them. These are property mappings that are actually just existing in the, in the main class, but somehow you have to reset them here. So weapons long sword, again, is here, the Agonian Maze is down there, and the two-hander indicator is here. Yeah, now it compiles. Now we have set everything, I guess. The animation blueprints for the weapons are linked. All the parameters are generated and are then transferred to the linked weapon animation blueprints. So I guess we should be ready to try it out. Okay, uh, let's make it a bit bigger, a bit small here. Okay. And yeah, we can run around. We are unarmed, that's the unarmed animation at the moment. Now let's take the one armed uh, Agonian Maze or the two armed Longsword. And yeah, the upper body is changing accordingly. And then we also can kind of change the skin and still 
are ready to go with our weapon. That has no functionality at the moment, but yeah, coming to that later. So that is the way how to use the plugin as a reference. I recommend having it as a read-only reference if you're interested in the, in the tutorials. I will update it accordingly to all the tutorials and always check in the newest version. And hopefully at one point <laughs> you can use it as a reference. You can use it um, to reuse components that are already in there. And then let's continue developing together our first game. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Bye.